The freshwater mussel is considered one of the most endangered of all plants and animals in North America. Not a lot of people know that, but the partnership for the Delaware Estuary is hoping to raise awareness in hopes of restoring the population in our rivers and streams. We introduce you to the freshwater mussel in our first look and explain why you should care about this little known bivalve. These fourth graders were learning all about freshwater mussels at Delaware's Make a Splash Festival at St. Jones Reserve in Dover, an interactive event teaching kids about the importance of water and how to protect it. There's mussels in this creek. The partnership for the Delaware Estuary put a spotlight on this little known bivalve. 100 years ago, 200 years ago, most of our streams had large numbers of mussels, and each mussel is going to filter 10 or 15 gallons of water every day helping to keep the water clean. They're like little natural water treatment plants, but they're at risk. While North America is home to over 300 species of freshwater mussels, 75% of them are endangered. Not a lot of people know, but freshwater mussels are the most imperiled of all plants and animals in North America. Here in the Delaware River Basin in the state of Delaware, there's about a dozen native species and really you can only find two or three of those. Freshwater mussels are not what we eat in mussels marinara. Because they don't have the backing of the commercial food industry, the freshwater variety doesn't get nearly as much love or attention. And that worries Danielle Krieger, science director at the Partnership for the Delaware Estuary, a clean water nonprofit. Think about it. If the freshwater mussel population continues to decline, water quality will worsen. For 20 or 30 years, state and federal agencies have been very focused on conserving the rare species. What we've been doing is very different. What we've been doing is focusing on even the common species with the philosophy that every live freshwater mussel is precious. Krieger says she's unaware of any program anywhere like Delaware's. In other words, one that focuses on the everyday mussel. So what's going on? What's endangering them? The answer is complicated. One of the main reasons is because for a freshwater mussel to reproduce, to complete its life cycle, it needs a fish. And every single mussel species has a very specific kind of fish, a size of fish, and a species of fish that it will reproduce with. Maybe man-made dams are keeping that specific fish host from the mussels. Pollution and water quality issues could also have something to do with their dwindling numbers. Whatever the reason, shellfish specialist Kurt Chang is laser focused on restoration. So the restoration projects that we've been conducting have mainly been small scale restorations where we're taking uh, a small number of mussels from healthy populations, putting them into restoration sites that we think have suitable uh, habitat, um, suitable water quality so that these mussels can survive and grow. Sometimes we'll actually deploy them with a electronic tag so that we can return to them uh, at a later date and see if they've still survived in those areas. Chang reintroduced mussels to Red Clay Creek about three years ago. This is the fourth time he's been out here to check on them, but had a tough time finding any. Down here, they're, they're, uh, they're not doing too great. And in streams where we do find mussels are uh, getting washed out or experiencing mortalities or dying, um, we'd want to target those areas and ch see if we can identify uh, the causes for those uh, mortalities or for the reasons why those mussels are getting washed downstream. Chang knows where to place the mollusks in the first place because of information gathered through the partnership's Freshwater Mussel Recovery Program. The partnership launched it back in 2007 to survey where mussels are and particularly where they're not. We have some ideas in some places where mussels are but we lack a, a lot of the information that we want. Jeff Long also works for the partnership. He's their watershed outreach specialist, or middleman, between the nonprofit and volunteers who want to help. Well, that's one of the components of my job, is to uh, connect people with, with bodies of water and mussels. Long teaches volunteers how to find mussels, how to identify them, how to collect scientifically useful data, and lastly, how to upload the data so the partnership can access it. It can tell us where healthy populations exist and where they don't, 
or where might be suitable locations to look at possibly establishing more muscles. On this day, kids with Wilmington's Green Jobs Program are reporting for duty here at the Brandywine River near Thompson's Bridge. The program brings city kids outside and exposes them to environmental issues and careers. 16-year-old Xavier Brooks Alexander jumped in with both feet. Today, I found two live mussels. I'm going for the biggest one, and but they're both live. I found three mussels. I found a small one, a medium one, and a large one. It wasn't hard. You just had to be patient and um, look around and then feel for it. I never knew like mussels were a cleaning source for the water. Last year, 14-year-old Amaya Johnson searched the river for freshwater mussels. This time around, she's the recorder. I'm just um, writing down all the um, clams that we found, my, um, my team found, and seeing what kind they are, where we found them, how many we found, and everything. The partnership gets a mix of federal, state, and private funding. But like many other nonprofits, money is always tight. So the Volunteer Mussel Survey really is an integral part of the Freshwater Mussel Recovery Program. Our scientists, we only have so many hours. We have good partners uh, that we work with to also fill in our gaps with scientific surveys. But the public programs have been so very important. The holy grail for Krieger to get a full-blown hatchery going to replenish these little guys, the understudied underdogs of freshwater. Danielle Krieger says she's now working on a grant with the state of Pennsylvania to build a long-term freshwater mussel hatchery there, so to be continued. Well, Shirley, tell me, can, could sea level rise actually have an impact on freshwater mussels? It can. So if salt water from the Delaware Bay rises and then travels upriver to freshwater zones, that could have an immediate impact on mussels. Now, Kurt Chang says another thing to consider is water warming up because of global warming. And so fish might leave the water if it gets too warm, and that fish could be the specific fish host for certain mussels and then they can't reproduce, so there's an immediate impact. Well, can anyone volunteer to help with mussels? They can. The surveys, Yes, actually? they can. Yeah. And uh, it's a lot of fun to be out there in the river and searching for mussels. It can also be so helpful to the partnership for the Delaware Estuary. You just have to complete a volunteer interest survey at DelawareEstuary.org slash volunteer. Thanks so much, Shirley. As always, you can find this story online at NewsWorks.org slash Delaware.